So Apple has just concluded its Worldwide Developers Conference, officially announcing iOS 18, iPadOS 18, macOS Secura, watchOS 11, VisionOS 2, and the anticipated Apple Intelligence, aka AI. We're gonna kick things off with iOS 18, and finally, Apple has broke the grid. You can now place your app icons anywhere on your home screen. Thank you. Finally. Now, if you watch my What's On My iPhone series on the channel, which by the way, if you haven't already subscribed, you guys know I always have my app icons on the lower portions of the screen so it's easy to reach. And usually I download an application called Blank. It just adds a blank widget so you could push down your app icons, but now you can just simply move your apps whatever you want. And alongside with that, you could give your app icons a new look. So you could customize the colors. Now from the screenshots and everything, it looks like it's gonna just be one consistent color. So in this case, if I change my app icons to blue, all the apps will have a blue accent. And you notice that each app background has a dark background. So whenever you invoke dark mode, which most of you guys do, you can now have dark icons. This is something that I've been wanting since iOS 13, and I'm happy to see it on iOS 18. And alongside with that, you could have larger icons, so my grandma is gonna love this feature. I definitely cannot wait to give you guys a what's on my iPhone iOS 18 edition, thanks to these customization options. But wait, it doesn't stop there. Control Center received a redesign, allowing you to relocate the platters, resize them, and you have multiple different pages. So for instance, you have your favorites, your media controls, your home controls, and you could easily customize it on the top left to add in more toggles or even remove toggles to make things a little bit more either advanced or more simplified. But my favorite feature on the control center is the fact how you could be able to resize them. And speaking of customizing toggles and platters and everything, you could finally swap out your lock screen controls. So no longer you have the flashlight and the camera, you could swap out the flashlight for a calendar or the notes. This is gonna be very handy, but me personally, once I had the iPhone 15, I just used my action button to invoke the camera. So now I'm scratching my head. Maybe I could probably have it towards a do not disturb or something else. But hey, this is the, this is nice. And finally, for the first time ever, you can lock or hide each application. Do you have games on your phone? You don't have to be worried if they switch out the games, they tap on your stuff. And no, no longer. You can hide your apps and you can lock your applications. So you can lock your photos, you can lock your messages for privacy reasons. And I think this is pretty cool. I think people are gonna make this a big meme out of it. Just watch and see. But thank you, Apple, for enhancing our security, <laughs> given that given that one ease of mind that you're protected. <laughs> so you can give anybody a phone without worrying. We have more exciting features for the iMessage. So with your tap back, where you can be able to heart things, like things, people love sending these out all the time, including me. Now you have a redesign, so everything looks a little bit more fun. It looks more fun, and now you can be able to react with different emojis. I think people are gonna be very creative with this one, and now you can be able to play around with the text. So for instance, you can animate certain text phrases like major or away, and it's automatically gonna suggest it as you type it, and I think these animations look pretty good. And for the first time ever, you can send messages through satellite and you have support for RCS. Now, I'm not gonna get too technical here on this video, but I know if you know, you know, this is a major deal. So now you could be able to send richer media. So whoever, so if you're sending a message to someone who has Android, no longer the media pictures are gonna be too tiny where they can't really see it. Now you have the full resolution image or video. This is a big deal. And also, alongside with that, you can schedule messages via send later. So let's say somebody's birthday is tomorrow and you don't want to forget it. You can now schedule a text message for that day um, at a certain time and it's going to be able to send that message. Amazing updates to Safari, such as the highlights. So it's going to give you a quick summary to whatever website that you're on. It's going to give you handy information such as the location, the phone number. Next up, you have your passwords app where it's going to showcase all your credentials all within one app. This is going to be available for all your devices, your iPhone, your Mac, your iPad, your Apple Vision Pro, and even your Windows PC. And this is just a RP to NordPass. 
Uh, I used to use NordPass, but then I canceled it because I just didn't really see the point of paying a subscription for something that I already have, such as uh, iCloud Keychain. So now that we have a password app, it makes things more easier, and especially that it is on my PC. Now, they didn't say that it's on Android. I don't think it's on Android, but I got to check and see. Now, one thing that is interesting with the wallet app, you can now send payments by tapping each other's iPhones. So very similar to Namedrop. To this day, people don't even know what Namedrop is. Uh, we still taking numbers the old fashioned way. Oh, I just hit my mic. It's cool, but they gotta have the right update and people don't even know what you're doing. It kind of will lose the chances of you getting that number. All right, no, just kidding. But, um, but yeah, there's something that people in the community, they need to know that you could do that. And with payments, this is gonna make things a little bit more easier. Apple is just reamping the user experience of iOS and I love it. And it doesn't even stop there. You have your AirPods, hand-free, Siri interaction so you can nod yes to answer a phone call or no to shake your head to decline a call which is pretty convenient especially if your hands are full this is something that we saw on the sony earbuds but it's nice to see it via the software update oh and one thing that i really do like i'm just looking through my notes here it's so many things here on ios 18 like this video would be three hours long if i were to make every single feature but this is just giving you guys my uh opinion on it my first impressions and i didn't even get into apple intelligence which is apple's ai their version of ai um that is going to be for a whole nother video i actually want to test that out myself and really see it in action but it's just a lot of cool things you could do with apple intelligence that it took apple a whole hour to explain everything but essentially this is only going to work on the iphone 15 pro or iPhone 15 Pro Max. It can summarize, it can write longer text. This is gonna be very interesting because there's a lot of subscription services that relies on uh, AI to do certain tasks that Apple Intelligent can do, but all of this stuff is free. So it could be able to create images. So it's just a lot of AI features. I'm not gonna get into it right now, I would like to make that a separate video, but it's a lot of incredible things you could do with Apple Intelligence. And the cool thing about this feature is you can highlight an entire paragraph. Let's say you typed up an email. You could be able to highlight that entire paragraph. And with Apple Intelligence, you can change the tone. So give it a more friendly tone, professional tone. I'm going to love this feature. I'm going to love it. I'm going to love it on my Mac. I'm going to love it on my iPad and my iPhone. And all those and all the iOS 18 features that I just mentioned is also available on iPad OS 18 plus a little bit more. Apple intelligence is also supported on the iPad, but you will need an M based chip iPad. Anything with the M1 chip or later, you are good to go. But now you have the calculator app on an iPad. They even did a little bit more to it too as well. So you could be able to uh, write out math problems and it could be able to solve it for you. But that's just not for the calculator app. This is really just for the notes. And then we have macOS Secura. And I know this name was coming because there was a lot of guesses on Twitter. I just love when Apple kind of rolls out the red carpet to macOS and they definitely did it, man. Uh, of course you have apple intelligence like i just mentioned but now you have iphone screen mirroring so you could use your iphone on your mac and this blew me away this is probably one of my favorite features on this entire event essentially let's say my phone is in my bag or if it's across the room or whatever i could be able to interact with my iphone on my mac so i could be able to open up instagram open up TikTok. now yeah it might be distracting uh, for some people, but but if you're a content creator like me and you're constantly creating content on TikTok and Instagram, you could be able to, to launch up Instagram and see how your reel is going to look like right there on your Mac. I can't tell you how convenient that's going to be. And it doesn't even stop there. You could be able to click and drag things seamlessly between different devices. So let's say I completed a project or if I want to upload a photo on Instagram, I can literally click and drag it from my Mac to the iPhone, while the iPhone is still on your Mac screen. You know, of course, Apple's taking features from Windows. You could be able to have easy click and drag window edging. So if you have a window on each corner, it's gonna resize the windows, 
to um, give you the perfect sizing to resize the next window. It's very similar to Windows 11. And usually you have to download a different plugin or an app on the App Store to utilize this uh, productivity feature. But now that the fact that it's baked in into Mac OS, that's a good look. Let's say you're on a conference call on your Mac. You could be able to change a background with an image or your image. It's going to be pretty good to have FaceTime calls now. I'm not sure if this is going to be on the iPad or iPhone. I think on the Mac, it makes the most sense because that's where you're going to have the most professional setup. And pretty much everything that I just discussed on iOS and iPad OS is here on Mac OS Secura. Now, Watch OS 11 didn't really intrigue me too much, but it is nice to see double tap API. So now developers can take advantage of that double tap feature. We also have the translate, so you could be able to quickly translate things right on your wrist. And of course, you have the you have live activity supported too, and you have smart stack where throughout the time, let's say for instance, if it's gonna start raining in the next 10 minutes, you could be able to see that widget, the weather widget right on top. So it's it's more intelligent than ever before, taking what you already know now and just making it even better. Now in terms of compatibility, the Apple Watch SE second generation is supported, Series 6, Series 7, Series 8, Series 9, Ultra, Ultra 2. No Series 5. And the Series 5 now is 2019, so it is getting, it is showing its age, but man, now, Vision OS received a healthy amount of updates, so you could create spatial photos from your 2D images. You could be able to share play photos. Wow me really with Vision OS was the fact how you could change your screen on, like when you mirror your MacBook's display, you could have a regular screen or you could have an ultra wide screen. Is this something? Could we see an ultra wide studio display from Apple? I would love that. But that was probably the coolest thing I saw right there. So you open up your Mac and now you have this ultra wide screen, this massive screen that you're going to see all around. That's going to increase productivity. You also have new environments to be immersed in. You also have mouse support. Thank you, Apple. So now you have your keyboard, you now have point and click. So yeah, uh, yeah, but for the most part, Vision OS 2 is a cool update. Nothing too groundbreaking yet, but as we go along, of course, I'm going to get more interested as time goes on, but can be able to utilize all these fun features right now. Today, public beta will be out next month in July, and the official public release will be out in the fall. So iOS 18, iPadOS 18, macOS Secura, Vision OS 2 will be out in the fall. And we all know in the fall time is iPhone season, so we will see the release of the iPhone 16. I cannot wait for that, and more than likely, that should be the next Apple event. If you guys enjoyed today's video, I appreciate it with a thumbs up. Subscribe because it's going to be a bunch of content of iOS 18. You guys don't want to miss it. Do yourself a favor and click on that subscribe button. Comment down below what you guys think, and yeah, I need some water. Uh